Hey guys, Andy from Sentinel Strategic back again. I'm here with my handy dandy chart. We're going to go over a little chalk talk here on uh, rifle ballistics. But before we do that, allow me to apologize. I haven't put out a video in a while. It's been a pretty busy couple weeks. Well, a couple months since I put out my last video. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time to put something together. And with the state of things and uh, current political situation, I've decided to kind of stay off the internet while a lot of other people have put things out because people need to be paying more attention to political stuff right now than they do this stuff simply because this stuff is always going to exist. Our political rights are always going to be an issue that we're going to have to deal with. So for those of you that have been fighting the good fight and trying to keep the Second Amendment alive, thank you. Um, I will take note, have everybody take notice, I am wearing my Minnesota Gophers shirt. The reason for that is because Gopher men's hockey is NCAA Division I leaders right now. We're in first place. So for all the for all those of you who are fans of other teams like you know Michigan, Wisconsin, North Dakota, Boston, uh, Anchorage, Colorado, I'll give you a minute to let that sink in. Okay, so what we have here, this is a chart that indicates ballistic uh, penetration ranges. The reason why I want to bring this up is there's a lot of talk online regarding what are the best rounds to use for home defense. What are the best rounds to use as a duty round for law enforcement and federal purposes? The reason why this is important is in 1986, April 11th, 1986, there was the infamous Miami shootout between the FBI and Michael Platt and William Maddox. During that sh uh, shootout, uh, Michael Platt was shot several times by FBI agents and they failed to stop him for a significant amount of time and it allowed Michael Platt to kill several FBI agents. Following that, the FBI determined that they needed to have better penetration characteristics with the ammunition that they were using. And because of that, through their own research, they determined that all rounds that they use for duty, regardless of pistol, shotgun, or handgun, should have no less than 12 inches of penetration and no more than 18 inches of penetration. This is the ideal range right here. Now, why is this important to you and me? Well, to me as a police officer, this is very important as a duty round because this is what will help me make a stop on a use of force situation involving deadly use of force. This is also important for me for home defense because I elect to use rifles for my home defense weapons. If my house is broken into, if I need to use deadly force in that instance, I want to use something that's going to act appropriately to stop the threat. And this is applicable to everybody who is a, uh, uh, somebody who, who is going to defend their home with, with a rifle, or with a handgun or shotgun for that matter. So we'll go into a little bit of detail here and I'll explain to you further what we're looking at. Okay, before we get into everything, I just want to get over, give out the disclaimer. I am not a ballistics expert. I do not work for the FBI. I am not affiliated with any ballistics testing agency or uh, ballistic research association. The information that I'm putting out here is information that has been provided by uh, both the ATK website as well as the Hornady website. This is commercially available ammunition with information that is available on the internet to everybody. I will put links to those websites down below. You can go and take a look at what they have available to you. I definitely encourage everybody to go check them out. Okay, what we're looking at is we have three different groups. This top group is barrier blind ammunition. This is ammunition that will perform the same regardless of whether or not it goes through a barrier. This is urban ammunition right here. Urban ammunition has a tendency to be affected by barriers and it's designed for a lower amount of penetration. Then down below we have match ammunition and shotgun ammunition. Now one thing I will preface this by saying is that when I mean barriers, what I mean is that during FBI and other ballistics testing, they test it rounds into bare gelatin as well as into gelatin covered with heavy clothing, uh, oh, wallboard, plywood, uh, sheet metal, steel, and auto glass. And what we're looking at is the variation ranges that these rounds will work in through those ranges. As you can see, we have a 55 grain and a 62 grain bonded soft point loads by Federal. The LE223T155 grain is ranging from 10.75 to 15 inches. The 62 grain bonded soft point, which is the T3 version, is 13.5 to 17.75 inches. You can see that these perform well within specified ranges and there's no over penetration. Spear 64 grain gold dot is slightly out at 11.5 on the bottom and slightly out on 18.5 on the top end. But most, for the most part, its performance range is going to be inside of that distance. These are all based on a conglomeration of the high and low within their operating range through all barriers. The next range that we have, 
right here, this is the 55 grain Barnes TSX load. As you can see, there's two parts to it. The operating range is 15.75 to 18.5 inches throughout various barriers. But there is a little anomaly out here. This anomaly out here is 23.75 inches of penetration into gelatin. This is from penetrating through steel. It should be noted that TSX loads are very, very consistent. They're very well performed. They do perform extremely well inside of this range. But when they go through hard up targets like auto glass and steel, they have a tendency to shear the pedals off and perform like uh, full metal jackets. So that's why we have this out here. This is typically not something you're going to see in a home defense situation, which is why the TSX load is a fantastic home defense load, as well as a decent uh, duty load as well. Hornady's GMX, 55 grain GMX barrier load, as you can see, is for the most part within operating ranges, but it does have a little bit of over penetration concerns. And the same is with their 70 grain GMX barrier load, which they both top out at 20 inches on the top end. In contrast, Hornady's 62 grain tap barrier soft point has a lot of low end under penetration and only goes slightly inside of the preferred zone. Now we contrast that to what we have here, which are the uh, urban loads. Within the urban loads, we have a 55 grain soft point, federal 55 grain uh, TRU soft point. We have the 55 grain TRU Bota hull point, which is a Sierra Game King load. And we have the 55 grain nozzler ballistic tip. All these are federal TRU loads. As you can see, the ballistic tip is the best option for, the, for, for somebody to use. If you're concerned about over penetration issues, none of these are going to give you that. We go on to Hornady. As you can see, these are the Hornady loads. The 40 grain, the 55 grain, and the 60 grain tap urban loads. These are VMAX loads. They're varmint rounds. As you can see, the 40 grain has the least amount of penetration with a minimum penetration of 2.5 inches to the maximum of 7 inches. As you can see right here, 55 grain is 4 inches to 10 inches, and the 60 grain is 5.5 inches to 9.75 inches. These are all under penetrating. There is no entry into the ideal penetration range, which means you can pretty, be pretty well sure that these are all going to under penetrate and, and likely underperform given, FB, uh, given the FBI standards. So the two urban loads, if you want to use urban loads, is the nozzle ballistic tip and the uh, 55 grain boat to hull points here, Game King loads, because at least these are more consistent. It should be noted that all these low ends right here are all through barriers, through hardened barriers like auto glass and steel. Otherwise, you chop off a good chunk of this low end with these loads because since these are not barrier blind, they break up and they lose a lot of weight when they go through. They have a tendency to fragment through those barriers. Now, in contrast, we look at the two, two match loads. We have a 77 grain Sierra Match King Bota Hall Point from Federal, going from 6 inches all the way out to 16 inches. And then we have the Horn D 75 grain Tap Boat Tail Hollow Point which is five and a half inches to 13 inches. You can see that the 77 grain has a lot more impact inside of the ideal penetration range, but over penetration for each of these, neither of them are a concern. Now we come down here to full metal jacket. This is a 55 grain full metal jacket. A lot of people talk about, well, I'd, I'd use you know XM193. This is essentially XM193. You're very similar to it. Slightly lower velocity with the AE223, because this is the American Eagle version but it's three and a quarter to 16 inches. This three and a quarter is through glass. Uh, this is very low penetration. Steel has a tendency to kind of mess it up a little bit too, but out here is where you get into uh, through the lighter, softer barriers. It should be noted that this is not a consistent return and that it's been noted by ballistics experts that full metal jacket ammunition does not perform consistently, so you cannot count on it acting like this. Additionally, the 62 grain full metal jacket that's used with the M855 ammunition, which is a 62 grain penetrator load, actually has a tendency to significantly over penetrate. Okay, so we come to the bottom here. We have three different loads right here. What we're looking at is these are your shotgun loads. The reason why I put these on there is this is a comparison. When people say, well, the best home defense weapon is always a shotgun. Everybody likes to think that, well, you can use birdshot. In fact, you can't use birdshot because birdshot has been proven very unreliable. Uh, keep in mind, people have been shot by birdshot and survived. And I'm talking shot at close range to point blank range and survived without significant injury. So what we're looking at here are 
common defense loads used. The top one right here is Federal LE 132 double lot buck, nine pellet double lot buck shot. A lot of people like to say a double lot buck is ideal for home defense because it'll spread. Well, LE 132 will not. Double lot buck actually has a tendency to over penetrate. As you can see right here, the minimum penetration is 17.75 inches and it goes out to 24 plus inches. The reason why it says 24 plus is because it went entirely through the block of gelatin that ATK used for the testing. Double lot buck shot, nine pellet, significant over penetration. So when you're thinking about home defense and when you're thinking about urban use, rethink buckshot. There are better options. There's a one buck load out there that Federal just put out that's supposed to be a lot closer to this range. It's supposed to perform a lot better. But for double lot buckshot, rethink that thought next time and consider rifle. Now let's take a look at slugs. We have two different slugs as an option here. These are both Federal options as well. We have a 16 feet per second high velocity one ounce rifled slug. This is their true bulb rifle slug. Minimum of 10 inches penetration and a maximum of 19.75 inches of penetration. The bottom one is, their th is the same slug, but it's a lower velocity 1300 feet per second slug, where you see that 12.75 inches on the bottom end all the way up to 23 inches on the top end for penetration. Why do we see these variances? Well, with a higher velocity, a lot of people would believe that a higher velocity will make it penetrate more. And in fact, it's actually the opposite. Higher velocity causes it to open up faster inside of the ballistic gelatin. And because of that, you actually see a more consistent performance inside of this ideal range. So you're going to see a better performance range right here with a higher velocity slug than you will with a lower velocity slug. But again, keep in mind that we're talking about 19.75 inches on the top end for your high velocity slug and the low velocity you're up at 23 inches. Um, inside of the human body when you want to be inside of 12 to 18 inches for a stop on a subject on a threat going over 18 inches can mean that you're gonna exit that body and that round can keep on going. There are concerns regarding over penetration. Um, how you interpret this data is up to you but when I look at shotgun loads I get very wary about using shotgun loads for home defense. I would not count on a shotgun load to perform better than a rifle load. So what do we learn from this information? What we learn from this information is that a lot of the information that we see on the internet isn't exactly the right information. And the reason why I wanted to put this out is because I get a lot of questions regarding uh, rifle round selection for home defense as well as for duty use from other fellow officers. Um, I do not put handgun loads up here, and the reason why I do not put handgun loads up there is because there's so many of them. This here would be covered top to bottom, all the way around the room. There's a lot of rifle rounds I didn't include on here either because I can't put that information on here because I don't have manufacturer's information to put up here. So this is solely for rifle rounds. Now what I will say is that through testing, a lot of people have done the testing, including private ballistics testing associations, and they have found that rifle rounds are actually more consistent than pistol rounds. And pistol rounds have a higher uh, propensity for over penetration than both barrier blind and other rifle loads. What I would recommend everybody do is to consider what you're using and what you plan on using for duty ammunition as police officers or for home defense ammunition for the uh, everyday or for, for the everyday uh, average or citizen. So look at this information, take from what you will, and look at the manufacturer's websites and really do some studying and look at what they have to offer and decide for yourself. Thank you, and as always, keep around the chamber.